Hey guys, good morning. So today is Thursday, December 10th, and we are on day 17 of module three. We are in our new book, Legend of the Blue Bonnet. And so we're gonna go ahead and just get started, okay? Hope everybody had a great afternoon yesterday. Alrighty, here we go. It's a pretty long video, but I think we'll be able to go through it quickly. Welcome back, incredible thinkers. I'm Sue Sabella, your Great Minds teacher. Let's see what we need for today. Today, you'll need your journal and a pencil. So please pause here to gather what you need and just hit play when you're ready to continue. Let's read this question together. What is happening in this, in this text? We'll be using story elements so we can better understand what is happening in the legend of the blue bonnet. As we work together to explore the story elements in the legend of the blue bonnet, we'll need four small pieces of paper. So you have a choice. If you'd like to use four post-its, you can use those. Or if you have a piece of paper, we can tear that into four different pieces. We can fold the paper in half, fold it up again, open it up, and tear it on the lines so you end up with four pieces. Now it's time to label each piece. Okay, so I realize that a lot of you may not have post-it notes at home, and you may not have blank paper. So what we're gonna do instead, we're gonna go to page 78 in our journal, and you're just gonna, oops. You're going to divide it up into four squares, okay? So go to page 78 and divide your paper in half and then divide it in half again. So half hot dog style or hamburger style and half hot dog style, okay? So you'll have four equal squares. piece with the name of each story element and you have a choice you can draw the icon or draw a picture to represent the story element you could write the word or you could use the first letter what does p stand for tell your learning partner or shout it out to me how about R? What does that stand for? Now we're ready. We have a piece of paper for each of the story elements, setting, characters, problem, and resolution. Okay, so in your journal, you are going to write those words, one word in each square, okay? I want you to have the setting and the characters on top, and then problem and resolution beside each other on the bottom. So go ahead and write these words, pause the video, write these words in your boxes, and then you can hit play when you're ready. As we revisit the legend of the blue bonnet, we want to keep the story elements and also these questions in mind. When and where does it take place? Who is in the story? What problem does the main character face? How does the problem end? As I read, we'll be adding information to those four pieces of paper 
we'll be jotting down what we're learning about the story elements. Ready? Here we go. Great spirits, the land is dying. Your people are dying too. There's information here that I need to add to my character sheet. Great spirits and the people. Pause here to jot down great spirits and the people. Just hit play when you're ready to continue. The long line of dancers sang, Tell us what we have done to anger you. End this drought. Save your people. Tell us what we must do so you will send the rain that will bring back life. As I read the rest of this page, I definitely hear the problem. Pause here to jot down what you think the problem is. Tell your learning partner too. Just hit play when you're ready to continue. According to the text, there's a drought, which means there has been no rain for a very long time. Whenever you need to add to your story elements, you can always take charge and pause the video so you can jot down information. Just hit play when you're ready to continue with our story and the story elements. For three days, the dancers dance to the sound of the drums. And for three days, the people called Comanche watched and waited. And even though the hard winter was over, no healing rains came. I now know from this page that the people are called Comanche. This is specific information that I would like to add to the character sheet. Pause here to add that information. Just hit play when you're ready to continue. Drought and famine are hardest on the very young and the very old. Among the few children left was a small girl named She Who Is Alone. She sat by herself watching the dancers. In her lap was a doll made from buckskin, a warrior doll. The eyes, nose, and mouth were painted on with the juice of berries. It wore beaded leggings and a belt of polished bone. On its head were brilliant blue feathers from the bird who cries, Jay, Jay, Jay. She loved her doll very much. Please pause here to jot down the name of the new character that we've just met. Just hit play when you're ready to continue. Okay, so who is the new character that we just met on these two pages? Her name is She Lives Alone. So we need to make sure that we are writing that in the character section of your chart on page 78. Let me show you my chart. So here I've got she who is alone, okay? So make sure you have her name written in there. As I read the next page, listen closely for more information related to characters. Soon, she who is alone said to her doll, the shaman will go off alone to the top of the hill to listen for the words of the great spirits. Then we will know what to do so that once more the rains will come and the earth will be green and alive. 
the buffalo will be plentiful and the people will be rich again. In addition to the great spirits and the Comanche people, we've now met she who is alone and also the shaman. Remember, as I'm reading, you can always pause to add more to your story element sheets. Just hit play when you're ready to continue with the story. As she talked, she thought of the mother who made the doll, of the father who brought the blue feathers. She thought of the grandfather and the grandmother she had never known. They were all like shadows. It seemed long ago that they had died from the famine. The people had named her and cared for her. The warrior doll was the only thing she had left from those distant days. This one's a bit tricky. As I think about this page, I'm not thinking about adding her mother and father and grandfather and grandmother to the list of characters. She's thinking back on a distant time. Those people are not characters in this story going forward. As I continue to read, Listen closely to see if there's anything else that you can add to the story elements sheets. The sun is setting, the runner called, as he ran through the camp. The shaman is returning. The people gathered in a circle, and the shaman spoke. I have heard the words of the great spirits, he said. The people have become selfish. For years, they have taken from the earth without giving anything back. The great spirits say, the people must sacrifice. We must make a burnt offering of the most valued possession among us. The ashes of this offering shall then be scattered to the four points of the earth, the home of the winds. When this sacrifice is made, drought and famine will cease. Life will be restored to the earth and to the people. We learned a bit more about the problem in this legend. Pause here to add information to your notes about the problem. Just hit play when you're ready to continue. Okay, so what else have we learned about the problem here? We know that part of the problem was that there was a drought, which means that there was not um, any rain. Okay, and so we know, guys, that if there's no rain, what doesn't grow? The plants and the grass. And if there are no plants to grow and there are no, there's no grass growing, that kind of makes it hard for them to, to be able to find food to eat, right? The Plains Indians, the Western Plains Indians used to travel and follow the buffalo herd and they would gather plants and vegetables and fruits as they were, as they were wandering. But if there's nothing growing, there's nothing for them to gather. And if there's no grass growing, what are the buffalo eating? There's nothing for them to eat. And if the buffalo don't have grass to eat, what's going to happen to them? They're going to die. And if all the buffalo are dying, they're starving, and there's nothing for the Comanche people to be able to eat. They can't eat the buffalo meat because their buffalo have already died, and you can't eat buffalo meat after it's already been dead for a while because you make you sick. So if there's no rain, and there's no plants or fruits or vegetables growing and it's causing the buffalo to die before the Comanche can hunt them. What else is a big problem here? They don't have anything to eat. There's no food. So there's a famine. That's what that means, a famine. It's a long period of time without food. So we need to add that onto our problem. So there is a drought, no rain, no food, famine. OK, 
Okay, let's start to the video. In addition to the drought and the famine, we also learn that the people had taken from the earth without giving anything back. That was also a problem. The people sang a song of thanks to the great spirits for telling them what they must do. I'm sure it's not my new bow that the great spirits want, a warrior said. Or my special blanket, a woman added, as everyone went to their teepees to talk and think over what the great spirits had asked. Everyone, that is, except she was alone. She held her doll tightly to her heart. You, she said, looking at the doll, you are my most valued possession. It is you the great spirits want. And she knew what she must do. As the council fires died out and the teepee flaps began to close, the small girl returned to the teepee where she slept to wait. Pause here to chat with your learning partner for a bit or to do some powerful thinking on your own. What are you noticing here? Will we be jotting more down for a problem or are we moving toward a resolution? Just hit play when you're ready to continue. Now that we've completed some of the story elements together, I'd like you to continue on your own. I'm going to read the rest of the story and it's going to be up to you to pause and to jot down your notes connected to the story element that you're hearing or seeing. Once you have your notes down, you'll just hit play to continue to listen to the rest of the story. Ready? Here we go. The night outside was still except for the distant sound of the night bird with the red wings. Soon, everyone in the teepee was asleep, except she who was alone. Under the ashes of the teepee fire, one stick still glowed. She took it and quietly crept out into the night. She ran to the place on the hill where the great spirits had spoken to the shaman. Stars filled the sky, but there was no moon. Oh, great spirits, she who is alone said, here is my warrior doll. It is the only thing I have for my family who died in this famine. It is my most valued possession. Please accept it. Then, gathering twigs, she started a fire with a glowing fire stick. The small girl watched as the twigs began to catch and burn. She thought of her grandmother and grandfather, her mother and father, and all the people, their suffering, their hunger. And before she could change her mind, she thrust the doll into the fire. Remember to continue to pause. Anytime you need to add something to your story elements and then just hit play when you're ready to continue with the legend. She watched until the flames died down and the ashes had grown cold. Then, scooping up a handful, she who was alone scattered the ashes to the home of the winds the north and the east, the south and the west. And there she fell asleep until the first light of the morning sun woke her. She looked out over the hill and stretching out from all sides where the ashes had fallen, the ground was covered with flowers, beautiful flowers, as blue as the feathers in the hair of the doll. 
as blue as the feathers of the bird who cries, Jay, Jay, Jay. When the people came out of their teepees, they could scarcely believe their eyes. They gathered on the hill with she who was alone to look at the miraculous sight. There was no doubt about it. The flowers were a sign of forgiveness from the great spirits. And as the people sang and danced their thanks to the great spirits, a warm rain began to fall and the land began to live again. From that day on, the little girl was known by another name, one who dearly loved her people. And every spring, the great spirits remember the sacrifice of a little girl and fill the hills and valleys of the land now called Texas with the beautiful blue flowers, even to this very day. What was the resolution? Pause here to think or to chat with a learning partner and then jot down your thinking. Just hit play when you're ready to continue. Okay, so what do you guys think the resolution was? What happened that made the rains come back? Yes, she who is alone gave up her doll. She's the one that made that sacrifice, the burning sacrifice that they, the shaman talked about. So we need to add that on to the resolution that she who is alone gave up her doll. But that's not all of the resolution. Something else happened after she did that. The next morning, what did they, they had the blue bonnets in the field and what else happened? What did the great spirits do? They sent that healing rain down to the earth. So we need to add that to our chart. That she who is alone gave up her doll and the great spirits send healing rain. So go ahead and pause and then get this copied down. And one more thing that we need to put on our chart here is the setting. Where is the setting? Where is the story taking place? We know that they are the Comanche people and we see all their teepees. So we know that it's where they are living. So we could say that it's the Comanche, it's their tribal land. So the setting is the Comanche tribal land okay so here we have our whole chart done we have the setting we have the characters we have the problem and we have the resolution okay make sure you have all of those written down please Let's go back to our video. You may have written this down. She who is alone gives up her doll. Or you may have even used the word sacrifice. That she who is alone sacrificed her doll for her people. You may have also added that because she gave up her doll, the land was alive again. It's a great time to take a stretch break. Please pause here to take a break and just hit play when you're ready to continue. I hope you had a fun break. Now that we have all of our story elements identified, we are going to use those story elements to help us recount the big events in the story. First, we'll go through it together, and then you'll be able to practice on your own or with a learning partner. And that's right, there is a check mark in the corner. 
So your classroom teacher will also check in with you about your recounting. Ready? Here we go. It started in Comanche tribal land. When the Comanche people took from the earth without giving back, it caused drought and famine. Then she who is alone gives up her doll. Finally, the great spirits send rain. Now it's your turn to practice recounting. Put your cards in order, starting with setting, then characters, then problem, and finally, resolution. Practice out loud on your own or with a learning partner, and practice more than one time until it sounds like your recounting is nice and smooth. Take as much time as you need and just hit play when you're ready to continue. Okay, so I'm going to use my chart, just like Miss Sabella said. Okay, so I'm going to start with setting, characters, problem, and then resolution. Okay, so it started in the Comanche tribal land when, oops, <laughs> sorry, hold on, let me go back. Okay, so it started in the Comanche tribal land when the Comanche people took from the earth without giving anything back. That caused drought and famine. Then she who is alone gave up her doll and the great spirits finally sent healing rain and life returned to the land. Okay. So what I want you to do is I want you to practice, practice, practice to saying that, all right, because you're going to need it in future lessons. All right, let's get back to sharing our screen. Why are introductions important? Let's take a closer look at the difference between an introduction and a topic statement. Let's begin by taking a closer look at what a topic statement does and how you use it. A topic statement tells the essential idea or what the paragraph is about. It answers the question and it also comes near the beginning. This paragraph has an introduction, a topic statement, evidence, and a conclusion. I'm going to read this paragraph two times. The first time I read this paragraph, I just want you to get a sense of what this paragraph is about. Ready? Here we go. Different old stories come from different Native American tribes. The legend of the blue bonnet tells a story about the Comanche tribe. The Comanche in the book live in Texas. They dance and sing to the great spirits for help during a bad drought. The Comanche in the legend of the blue bonnet are one of many Native American tribes. What is this paragraph about? Pause here to tell your learning partner or to think about that question on your own. Just hit play when you're ready to continue. Okay, so what do you think this paragraph is about? Okay, so this one is a little bit tricky, okay, because we have learned that the topic statement is usually the first sentence of a paragraph. But the sentence that starts this paragraph says, different old stories come from different Native American tribes. But the rest of the paragraph does not talk about different Native American tribes. It talks about the Comanche. 
The Legend of the Blue Bonnet tells a story about the Comanche. The Comanche in the book live in Texas. They sing, dance and sing to the great spirits for help during a bad drought. The Comanche in the Legend of the Blue Bonnet are one of many Native American tribes. And then if I look at my, um, my conclusion, remember the conclusion is just the topic statement reworded. And it says the Comanche are one of many Native American tribes. And this sentence right here, the legend of the Blue Bonnet tells a story about the Comanche tribe. So I'm thinking that the second sentence may be more likely to be the topic statement than the first sentence. So I think maybe the first sentence is the introduction and the second sentence may be the topic statement. Let's see what Ms. Sabella says. Now I'd like you to read the paragraph on your own and identify the different parts of the informative paragraph. Find the topic statement. Find the evidence or the points that support the topic. And also find the conclusion. Then we'll talk a bit about the introduction. Pause here to read and to locate the parts of the informative paragraph. And then just hit play when you're ready to continue. Okay, so like Miss, like we just said, I, I think that the evidence, the rest of the paragraph supports the second sentence as the topic statement better. The first sentence is not talking about specifically the Comanche, it's talking about all kinds of Native American tribes. But this sentence narrows it down to the Comanche tribe. And then the next sentence is evidence about the Comanche. The fourth sentence is evidence about the Comanche. And then the last sentence, which would be the conclusion, is also about the Comanche. So I think we have introduction first, then we have our topic statement, then evidence one, evidence two, and then our conclusion. Let's see if we are right. Now I'm going to read this paragraph again as we identify the parts of the informative paragraph. Ready? Here we go. Different old stories come from different Native American tribes. The legend of the Blue Bonnet tells a story about the Comanche tribe. The Comanche in the book live in Texas. They dance and sing to the great spirits for help during a bad drought. The Comanche in the legend of the Blue Bonnet are one of many Native American tribes. This paragraph is definitely about the Comanche tribe. I see and hear the word Comanche all through the paragraph. In each sentence, except for the very first sentence, talks about the Comanche. The legend of the blue bonnet tells a story about the Comanche tribe is the topic statement. That sentence is near the beginning and it's telling me what's going to come up in the rest of the paragraph. The two sentences in the middle of the paragraph are evidence that support the topic statement. It's providing more information about the Comanche, specific information that supports the topic. The sentence at the end is the conclusion. It reminds us as readers what the paragraph is about. Listen to the first sentence one more time. Different old stories come from different Native American tribes. You probably noticed that this introduction is not just talking about the Comanche tribe, but it's talking about how different old stories come from many tribes. This introduction is leading us to the topic statement but it is not 
a topic statement. Introductions provide background information on a topic. They start the paragraph and identify the overall topic. Topic statements are different. They tell you exactly what the paragraph is going to be about. They narrow the focus. They answer the question and they come near the beginning, perhaps right after the introduction. But the introduction always starts the paragraph. Legends are so much fun to explore, and they can also teach us so much about the world and teach us life lessons. You are growing so much as a reader and a writer. Share your knowledge with others, and I will see you again very soon. Okay, guys. So that was that was our lesson for today. We worked on story element and we worked on identifying the topic statement and the introduction statement, which was new for today. So um, that's all that we have. Make sure that you have page 78 copied down in your journal. Right. Okay. And that's that will be all for today. So I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you in a little bit for phonics. Bye, guys.